I'll bet you thought you were safe. I'll bet you thought you'd managed to outlast all those friends of yours that had been begging no pleading you to watch the show. You thought they'd moved on to saying you needed to watch Mad Men or Breaking Bad instead. You're goddamn right. But if you're watching this video, it's probably because someone still needs you to know why you should watch Firefly. Also, I really want to make Shiny a part of the modern vernacular, so let's do this. Shiny. Firefly is a show from writer-director Joss Whedon, which began in 2002 and was unceremoniously cancelled halfway through its first season by Fox. That's weird. With a follow-up movie in 2005 to finish the story. The show follows the crew of the Serenity, a Firefly-class cargo ship doing jobs in the outer rim of the universe. In this future, the inner core of planets run by the Alliance have sent colonizing ships out to the border planets, but terraforming a planet or moon isn't always enough, and without the same technological infrastructure of the core planets, those on the rim need to rely on more old-fashioned means to survive. That's how the show's mashup of science fiction and western genres work. Before the first episode, there was a civil war between the border planets wanting independence and the Alliance. The independents lost, and some of them were scattered to the rim in search of a life of freedom, including Serenity's captain, Malcolm Reynolds, and his first officer, Zoe. In the pilot episode, they take on an ensemble of passengers, including an enigmatic shepherd, a button up young doctor named Simon and his unusual cargo. Huh. His sister River. There's a lot more detail and universe building in there, but that is pretty much the gist of the first half hour. While Mal is the one who holds the crew together, Firefly was built to be an ensemble show with no singular pro or antagonist. Instead, there is just the struggle for survival, freedom, personal gain, and the next job is just a means to keep that struggle going for another day. All in the service of characters that are shockingly vivid for such a short-lived series. It may sound heavy, but the writers tell their stories with a generous amount of humor, and it's all held together by the absolutely electric chemistry between the cast. Well, short answer? <laughs> Fox. Fox did almost everything they could to prevent Firefly from finding an audience. Several years prior, Fox was originally airing one of the most successful and long-running science fiction shows in history, The X-Files. The term Friday Night Death Slot may actually come from Fox's impatience to strike X-Files gold there again. X-Files would go off the air in 2002 when Fox began the longest TV show death march of any network. Everybody, I got bad news. We've been canceled. Fox has to make room for terrific shows like Dark Angel, Titus, Undeclared, Action, The Pits, Firefly, Get Real, Louie, and Greg the Bunny. Is there no hope? Well, I suppose if all those shows go down the tubes, we might have a shot. And to that degree, Firefly's fate was sealed when it started. But the network also meddled with the show directly, including them wanting Whedon to nix the relationship between Wash and Zoe. Whedon originally made a two-hour pilot called Serenity that takes some time introducing the universe, the relationships between the characters, and the arc of the series. Fox didn't like it and requested something else, so he and Tim Minear wrote the train job over a weekend. What are we doing? Oh, crime. Crime? Good. A solid but far less elegant introduction to the world of the show and its characters. Fox then went and aired the episodes of the show out of sequence, and because IMDb sorts by air date, they still have the wrong order. They also twice preempted the broadcast of episodes to show baseball games and an Adam Sandler movie instead. Fox officially canceled the show at the end of 2002, but strong word of mouth and critical reception drove DVD sales that turned Firefly into something of a phenomenon in its time. I don't care, I'm still free, you can't take the sky. Me and I have been having an agreement. If one of us dies, we stage it to look like a suicide caused by the unjust cancellation of Firefly. We're gonna get that show back on the air, buddy. Well, you may think you don't like the Western or science fiction genres, but you probably have liked stories that are Westerns and science fiction. Exhibit A. 
Generally, I believe when people say they don't like one genre or another, what they're really saying is they don't like the cliches of those genres. Someone may find the rigid formula of the crime procedural comforting, but roll their eyes at the mention of phasers or the sight of a large rolling vista with some swelling brass. In a way, a genre can be an anchor for a viewer, either grounding them or weighing them down. But it doesn't take much for a story to transcend the genre gap. A story can show you something you've never seen before, or be so entrenched in a gritty realism that it barely feels like genre fiction to begin with. A great performance can sucker us in. I'm your huckleberry. As can great direction. And at various points throughout, Firefly exhibits all of those. Wonderful performances, engrossing direction, and a story that feels less about spacefaring frontiersmen and more about people just dealing with the same questions of morality and human purpose as we are. We would. Using characters and the motif to explore questions relevant to us today. In fact, according to Whedon's vision, nothing will change in the future. Technology will advance, but we still have the same political, moral, and ethical problems as today. Generally speaking, I think when people hear Western or science fiction, they end up with relatively concrete mental images. That of John Wayne fighting off deadly Indian threats, at the same time pushing farther into and taking their land, or... Sir. We mean you no harm. Do you understand me? Captain, we are being probed. They use their crimson force field! Firefly offers a relatively unique approach to both genres through one conspicuous omission. No aliens. There are no natives losing their home to the rapidly encroaching English speakers written to be the heroes. No long-winded negotiation scenes or ethnically questionable aliens. I'm not suggesting Firefly is any kind of storytelling state of perfection, free from any problematic elements. Far from it, really. Only that it is unique and won't be what you're expecting from either genre. Whedon started developing the idea for Firefly when he read a Pulitzer Prize-winning book about the American Civil War Battle of Gettysburg, and was inspired to create a more gritty, tactile, character-driven science fiction show about people at the edges of civilization discovering things about themselves and their humanity. At first blush, the idea that Whedon read a book about the Civil War and then went and made a series in which the rebels were the heroes could and should raise some eyebrows. But let's dig a little deeper. Within the Firefly universe, the rebels, known as Browncoats, are mainly fighting to gain independence from the Corporate Alliance. That's it. Thus, they avoid some of the more unsavory comparisons to the Confederates. In fact, it's much easier to say Mal bears a striking resemblance to another famous, charming, galactic rebel. Hey. It's me. There have been many rebellions in history, both successful and failed, yet no one looks at Star Wars and wonders if George Lucas was secretly romanticizing the pro-slavery South. Firefly is far more concerned with the Western notion of the frontier and the personal and philosophical implications that would have on an individual. As Joss said, Firefly is about nine people looking into the blackness of space and seeing nine different things. Nonetheless, it's important to be aware of potentially problematic aspects of the stories we consume, especially since the rewriting of the Southern cause as a just and noble one, and not something that was fought over slavery, is an actual ideology that has been around in America since the Civil War ended. In fact, it seems like Whedon might have eventually used Firefly as a medium to comment on the topic, given that one of the first purveyors of the Southern rewriting of Civil War history, called the Lost Cause, was the Southern Confederate General Jubal Early. That seemed right to you. Getting hooked on a show from the pilot or even the first couple episodes is a pretty rare occurrence. Even some of the best shows out there have a hump to get over before you fall for the characters or the universe they're living in. Sometimes that's a few minutes, sometimes a few episodes, and sometimes it takes two whole seasons before they stop making the cast wear the adult onesies. Get Riker a beard, bring back Beverly and stuff. Wait, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Firefly. Okay, first off, remember that Fox aired the show out of order, so it's important to make sure you're watching the episodes as intended. Based on my deep experience, extensive, purely anecdotal evidence, it generally takes people three or four episodes to really get into the show. By Shindig, people are interested. By our Miss Reynolds, there's no turning back. All in all, not too bad, if you bear in mind the multiple seasons of awkward breakfasts at the White Household. Well, now... 
That I understand. Even if Firefly still has more content than some film series, the cultural fervor that existed around the show at the time, and still persists to this day, was enough to allow Whedon to convince the studio to fund the movie, Serenity. And the movie does bring a sense of closure to the major arcs the show set up. When it's over, there are still a few unanswered questions, but I am never left with a sense of incompletion. But there is some melancholy. Firefly didn't burn out. It didn't overextend its welcome. It didn't raise a bunch of questions it didn't know how to answer. It was just this richly realized, delightful thing for a time. And then before long, it was over. Some shows are on for six or seven years and the characters never feel as alive as Fireflies. The show's performances feel effortless and true. Their actions are always in line with who they are. Their choices are conflicted but understandable, always reaching for some truth or moment that feels indelibly human. That is no more or less than what it should be. That's not much. It's enough. Do yourself a favor and watch. I'll try and keep links for where you can in the description and keep them current. If you watch and it sticks with you the way it did with me and you want to go a bit deeper, I'll be producing an episode-by-episode -episode analysis of it here on this channel. But if nothing else, you'll finally be able to shut those Firefly-recommending friends of yours up. Shiny. Let's be bad guys.